So when I was younger, I was 19. Wow, very young. I had some money saved up and that was when I turned to stash away to invest my money with. The initial expectations was to have an AI to manage my money in a portfolio and grow my wealth in a long period of time with a significantly low cost comparing it to an active fund manager. I don't hear anything from the index fund. Where are they? <laughs> the time horizon that I was aiming for was about five years, not too long, not too short. But at that time, I had the expectation of also getting a benchmark return of about 7 to 10% every single year. Now, I will talk about that a little bit more later in this video. So fast forward to two years later, here are my returns. The returns are as 27 ringgit and 49 cents and about 1.15%. Wow, very impressive. Now, I made a whopping 1.15% on top of my initial capital after dollar cost averaging continuously every single month for two years. That is something that pretty much everyone can achieve. So over this long period of time that I've been investing with Stashaway, it was all going okay until the very recent news or the announcement that sparked a lot of fears in the market. And that is the delisting of all the China's stocks from the well-known markets, all the publicly traded markets in the world like the NYSE, or the Nasdaq. Potential delisting. The SEC in the had named States five US listed ADRs of Chinese firms that could be delisted if Asia, they well, don't Chinese provide uh, enough Kong information. Now, and that has caused one of the largest tumbles in the 36% risk index portfolio across all of the stash away users. It dropped so hard. Oh, so hard, I can feel it in my. However, I didn't have any problems with the fluctuations of my portfolio. It goes up and down. It happens to the best of us and it happens from time to time in investing. The problem that I have with Stash Away is that they sold out of the KWEB ETF, which is the China's index fund, which is one of the largest holdings across all 36% risk index portfolio on the platform itself. Not only that, they also sold it out when it was down tremendously. Now, if you know me, you know that I'm the type of person who would go against the current. So when they drop, I would prefer to go ahead and buy more. But instead, Stash Away sold it just at the bottom right before the rebound. So that is how much we have missed out or at least, you know, we could have just ride it along and we wouldn't have lost that much of money from our across our portfolios. So Stash Away sold out the KWEB China's ETF and the next thing they did was to add an Australia's ETF, which is EWA. Now, a lot of people on Reddit are talking about how bad this ETF is and I personally do not have any knowledge or have I even heard of this ETF at this point. So this is just my first time. So I'm just going to take people's opinions on Reddit as it, it looks is. like Stash Away Paper handed this trade. I wouldn't entirely blame them because I'm pretty sure the people making the decisions have their reasons behind this action. However, though, I do have a portfolio set up with Stash Away for my future iPhone 15. Now, I've had a video talked about this one in the past. So if you guys are interested in watching that one, you guys can go ahead and click the video top right. I've had this account set up a direct debit from my bank account straight to Stash Away of 30 ringgit continuously every single month. The goal here is not to fully cover the iPhone, obviously, because it's not going to be enough by the time I buy the iPhone next year, but to hopefully gather enough of capital, generate a small amount of profit so that I do not need to pay for the iPhone's full price straight from my bank account because BLM, bank lives matter too. So the returns that I've garnered through this portfolio is a negative 13 ringgit and 32 cents, a whopping negative 2.53% and a negative 7.59%. So looking back at the two years of investing with Stash Away, I can't help but to think to myself, what could I have done differently if I were to not invest into Stash Away? What will my returns be if I were not to invest with Stash Away? And that is when the S&P 500 instantly popped up in my mind and let's just go ahead and compare the returns if I had not invested in Stash Away but with the S&P 500 instead. So we are in the VOO's index fund and I've started investing with Stash Away about 20 plus of April. So we're just gonna go ahead and look for it about 24 of April, all the way until today, we would have generated over 51% and $133 if we were to own one share of that VOO. Of course, this is just a rough measurement because I'm not taking any kind of dollar cost average into accounts. But if I were to take my dollar cost average every single month into accounts, my profits from the S&P 500, if I invested in the S&P 500, would probably be lower than 51%. But at least we know that if we invested into the VOO index fund two years ago, until today, the generated returns will definitely be higher than the stash waste portfolio instead. Would've, should've, would've, blah, blah, blah. It's too late anyways. Feels like the S&P 500 is overrated at this point.
but it is the most basic and benchmark index to compare your portfolio to. So that is the best index fund that I could come up with with a comparison. Here's my opinion overall. The two years return that Stashway brought me has slightly disappointed me. The reason why I'm only slightly disappointed with this portfolio is because this is just a small portion of my portfolio. I maximize my returns in my other portfolios through stocks and cryptocurrencies very well. And well, I'm glad I didn't get burned twice. huh? So what I will be doing today is to stop my direct debits from my bank account directly to my Stashway portfolios but I will not be selling any of my positions. I'll just keep my money in stash away because as I said earlier, it's not that much of money. I will leave it inside until I find further opportunities to invest in cryptocurrencies, stocks, or maybe personal investment opportunities as well. I'm just glad that my portfolio is not completely in the red. We all learn new things every day, just like how I learned that DeFi is under one of the protocols in cryptocurrency last Who would have thought that I could have been doing so many research, so much research into cryptocurrency space and still not know that DeFi is actually under one of the protocols of cryptocurrency? Quite dumb, right? If you're interested in watching a video on how you can get a high paying job in the cryptocurrency field through your favorite crypto projects or any kind of favorite protocols, you guys can go ahead and click the video right here. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. See my mama, her eyes, they were trying to work towards these blessings, but the devil keep